welcome to this session about how you can build sustainable supply chains to drive profitable growth. My name is Boeing Stenson. I'm the president and managing partner of Stenson Performance Group. It is a global industrial advisory uh, group. So this presentation today is about how you really can build sustained performance in your supply chain. Because I think that companies do not compete, supply chains compete. And I will talk a little bit about what I think you need to do to differentiate and drive profitable growth. I've divided my presentation into the market environment, which I think you need to understand to really be able to uh, develop an agile, adaptive and aligned business model. How you can understand customers' expectations and uh, how you can deliver customer value. I think this is, a, in the world we are living in, a big opportunity for supply chain and procurement professionals to orchestrate the transformation. Strategic partnership is a key ingredient for this uh, successful, how to become successful. I also think that uh, we are going into a new era where sustainability and resilience can be developed to become a competitive advantage. So that is what I will talk about today. So coming into the first chapter, the market environment and the outlook, because I think here it's very important that you are, we are all up to date and try to understand what's really going on. Many people think that we are in a very volatile environment right now. But I think if you go back uh, 20 years or so, we have always been living in a quite uh, volatile uh, world with a lot of uncertainty. I mean, if you look uh, into 2000, we had the dot-com bubble, sept uh, September 11, then followed by the global financial crisis. Do not talk about the commodity price collapse in 2014 where we could see that uh, the global commodity prices fell 38% between June 2014 and February 2015. Then we had uh, the global warming that reached uh, record levels in 2017. And that has been a continued story throughout the years. Brexit, that was a long story between 2018 and 2020 that uh, had a big impact on how we operate our global supply chains as well. Then the uh, pandemic in, two, in 2020, followed by a lot of uh, supply chain disruptions and uh, material shortages. And now we have the Russian-Ukrainian war, uh, driving a lot of cost inflation uh, around the world. So we're quite uh, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world we are living in. And that reflects also in the commodity pricing. Just to give a little bit of a flavor of the situation when we talk about energy, the, the WTI price development, the Brent price development, net guys. They're quite, if you look at 10 years back, volatile development where we have seen rocketing prices the last year or so. But also if you look at how difficult it is to predict the future, uh, if you look at the mid, um, picture in the middle here, um, the experts, they have also difficult in predict the future uh, pricing levels. And I think this is uh, across uh, the board. Also, if you go into uh, iron ore, that uh, is a big ingredient for steel making, we can see the same trends. And I think that uh, plays out across all commodities around the world. So how do we manage that? Despite this environment, um, it seems that if you look at the business sentiment, there is still a quite good business sentiment around the world. Uh, if we look at the JP Morgan Global Manufacturing PMI, it's still uh, traded about, about 50, uh, and it has been done so for the last uh, 22 uh, months, even if we see a little bit of a decline in, in the sentiment. 
And also, if you look at the right side of the picture, we can see that there is a big difference between the different countries and regions of the world. So, um, we are living and we need to manage a multi-speed world uh, to be able to create uh, differentiation and uh, competitiveness. So, um, I think if we try to summarize what we have seen the last um, two years or so, we had the pandemic, uh, we had a lot of shortages, issues with cybersecurity, lab uh, labor shortages. There has been a lot of new trading regulations um, and uh, we know all about the price inflation going on. What has really popped up the last five years or so and uh, it's really on the top agenda across all the world is of course the green agenda sustainability. And I think this will really continue going beyond where I think sustainability and resilience will be of even bigger importance. I think the cost inflation, the geopolitical instabilities will continue, labor shortages will continue. So how do we address this in our supply chain strategies to create differentiation and uh, profitable growth. A key ingredient here will be sustainability, how you develop partnership with your strategic partners and uh, develop very good resilience uh, strategies. So what do we need to do when it comes to then meeting uh, customer expectations and deliver customer value? As I said before, I'm a strong believer in that companies do not compete, supply chains compete. Because if we look at uh, uh, the business cycles, we are in a growth mode or a decline mood. It seems that um, if we are in the old fashioned way with price increases, price de uh, um, decreases, we are just shifting money between the business cycles. It's important to try to work with your partners upstream, downstream to create sustainable value because supply chains compete, companies do not compete. So I think the key questions to ask yourself is how can I make my customer successful? How can I become the preferred supplier to my customers? And how can I become the customer of choice for my suppliers so I can get access to new innovations and the capacities and capabilities of my supplier base? It's very important to understand my customers' value proposition. What do they really want? And what is unique with my products, my solutions and my service offerings? What differentiates? And what strategies and actions and KPIs should I, deliver, shall I, should I um, develop to drive success for both parties? Because in this game, it's a win-win game. The supply chain compete, not the companies. I think these are very simple questions, but very key questions to be able to answer and go through. We have seen also a lot of uh, new disruptive business models, a, new, a lot of new disruptive technologies the last uh, 10 years. And that has been intensified through the digitalization, new technologies, artificial intelligence, and so, so, so forth. So where in this new environment am I on, on, the, on the scale, so to say? On what do I compete? What are the business characteristics? Is it cost leadership? Is it uh, that we compete on features, flexible production? And based on the, this scale, you need to really think about what kind of supply chain strategy should I then develop to become very agile, adaptive and aligned with my business partners. To understand value, I think is a key, key uh, capability and capacity you need to have. And it always starts with um, understanding the customer. What do they need? What kind of needs have they expressed? What are the unmet uh, needs? Insights on how the competitive advantages 
contributes to value creation. And then you can start to develop the value proposition, how you quantify value, the metrics, and the key key thing here, how you document value. And some uh, global corporations has been very, very good at how to uh, quantify and document value to uh, really drive profitable growth. So if we look at this uh, business environment, I think this is a big opportunity for all people working in supply chain management or procurement to be in the driver's seat to drive transformation. Because we need to go from this pricing mindset, um, which uh, when you start um, some kind of exercise to, to uh, coming into new corporation or try to help corporations, it's all about how you uh, clean up the backyard to introduce more competition, get better volume leverage, drive standardization, but it will not be enough. You have to walk up the ladder to addressing total cost, how you can help customers to reduce uh, usage, streamline processes and uh, look at specifications design, work with suppliers and customers on co-innovation, maybe create technology partnership, uh, share risks, because then you can create true, true value in your supply chain. I think SKF is a, a world-class uh, company when it comes uh, to the bearing industries uh, in automotive industrial, and they have been very, very good when it comes to uh, how to uh, create value for the customers and also communicate uh, the value. And this is a very good example. So even if the price is higher, you, you maybe buy a higher, uh, you invest $5 more, as you can see from this example, but it creates much, much more value when it comes to uh, using a better product in terms of using less lubrication, less energy, less inventory, faster installation, longer uptime, higher reliability. So even if you pay a little bit more in price, it creates much, much more value. A very, very important takeaway and how you can create differentiation in the marketplace. I also think, uh, uh, as I said, when you come in um, to do something, you have to start with the basics, the strategic sourcing activities, uh, how, how you clean up the backyard, but then you have to move up uh, the ladder going into demand management, cost structure transformation when it comes to make or buy, uh, when it comes to early engagement of suppliers and customers, and then go into how you can impact product and the, the brand. So it's all about how you can create value leadership through cost leadership. But even if we live in this VUCA world, as they say, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, I think there is a lot of medicine in the cupboard we can use. Strong and clear KPIs is, of course, very, very important, but they don't need to be complex. They can all be built on on the QCDIM concept, how you measure, communicate, performance in quality, cost, delivery, innovation, and management. Management, when we talk of KPIs, is all about strategic alignment, how you address resilience and sustainability uh, to create a strong competitive supply chain. Because it's all about how you can engineer uh, bottom line growth combined with top line growth, addressing design, material, what kind of process you use, how you uh, look into market segmentation, different kind of features and so forth. And this is e more important than ever, especially when we, we live in this new world of digitalization and sustainability. But, but here is a lot of opportunities when it comes to what we can do in addressing circular economy, waste management, and how we can drive greenhouse gas emission reduction.
Sustainability is, of course, um, very, very important. And we all know about uh, uh, scope one, scope uh, two, sco scope three. What we need to address in, uh, when it comes to the upstream activities and the downstream activities. But I think here is also very, very key to ask some strategic questions and address them. Do you have a formal sustainability program? Uh, what is the role of sustainability in your strategic plan? What are the main environmental, social, and economic challenges and opportunities in your business and how do you address them? What are the objectives and targets in your sustainability efforts? Because this is not a quick fix. This is a long-term program that will continue. But if you do it right, it can really create profitable growth. And also, last but not least, how do you measure success and how do you communicate progress? Very, very important. But with these questions, I think you can develop a quite good sustainability program. So if we, we talked very much about the, maybe you could say short and midterm activities, I think the long-term uh, approach could be divided into strategy development, capabilities and capacities and governance. Because today I think it's more important than ever to look at your uh, manufacturing footprint st strategy, offshoring, nearshoring, localization, or whatever you call it. The business models maybe needs to be changed. Do we need to develop product as a service, software as a service as we know about, equipment as a service? The relationship and collaboration model needs to be reviewed with uh, strategic partners. How do we really create win-win relationships? Capabilities and capacities in this new world of digitalization and disruptive technologies, there are new capabilities and capacities that are needed. Do we have the right workforce to manage the new normal going forward? Do our strategic partners have the right capacities and capabilities, very important at, as it is the supply chain that competes. Governance model, how do we speed up decision making to ensure full alignment and stakeholder in involvement and engagement, not just internally, but also with customers and suppliers. So going into the strategic partnership uh, part, if we just work on, uh, what sh shall I say, strategic sourcing activities, negotiations, looking for new suppliers, that can have a big dividend, but we cannot work with it forever. We have to go in to build strategic relationship management with both our strategic customers and our strategic suppliers upstream. Other ways, we will see declining results. And we can do that in different ways. I think uh, the key components of a uh, strategic relationship management is really commitment from the top, that we take a long-term relationship view, trust, mutually agreed objectives, and some other more essential ingredients is really uh, the win-win attitude, as you can see here, uh, define KPIs that really drive win-win and then a clear governance model. And I think a clear governance model could look like this because it must start from the top and then go down to different levels in the organization with structured meetings. It can be annual meetings with uh, the, the top dogs of the, of, uh, the supplier and the customer and then um, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily meetings, depending on the level uh, in the organizations. But this kind of model, governance model, can create a quite good foundation uh, or, um, if you would like to build strategic relationship with customers and suppliers. So, Coming a little bit uh, to the end of this presentation, I think uh, sustainability and resilience strategy can really be developed as a competitive advantage in this VUCA world. Because as I said in the beginning, 
the last 20 years and probably the last 50 years, if you take a longer perspective, we have always seen volatility when it comes to uh, geopolitics, technology development, and it will continue. Supply chain disruptions will continue, cost inflations, geopolitical instability, labor shortages, and, and so forth. And new disruptive technologies will also we will also see a lot of going forward. So um, I think uh, key, the key components in, in a resilience and sustainability uh, strategy is really how you develop strategic partnerships, that you look at uh, capabilities and capacities. When we talk about uh, the labor shortages, I think um, the, the, the less globalized labor market will necessitate a change in the human capital strategy because new kind of skills will be needed, tools and processes as well. And it's extremely important to create transparency in all what we are doing because um, when you look at uh, investors, shareholders, they will in the future look more for non-financial metrics and, and performance than before. So transparency, how you communicate progress is extremely important. And also really reviewing your bus the business model. Maybe the supply chain business model needs to be reinvented um, and how you operate with customers and, and uh, suppliers. So institutionalize the new normal. I think it's enough, not enough to change. You have to be very bold. You need to transform. That will create profitable growth going forward. Key components here is, of course, always looking at the basics when it comes to product design, where the eco, eco design, how you use renewable energy, design to cost, design to value will be key, key ingredients. Other key areas, of course, sales and marketing, addressing um, how you sell on value, product lifecycle assessments, and all the new environmental certifications that you need to be up to date with. When it comes to operations, look at the manufacturing footprints, how you develop partnerships, and the whole area of business model transformation. And then you have the ESG agenda, of course, but it doesn't need to be complex. It's complex enough. But I think these are key areas and key components we need to address. And of course, uh, you need to, we need to all, all to be humble. We need to learn from the best. Uh, benchmarking uh, is always very, very good to see what uh, other companies are, are doing and learn from them. And uh, maybe we cannot copy what they're doing, but we can learn and, and uh, try to implement what we can do in our operation. To be able to set the right strategies, actions and targets, uh, how we can understand customers' value proposition and by that develop uh, uh, value that differentiates, and then track implementation, track results, create transparency and communicate very very important so um, thank you very much for listening to this uh, presentation about uh, how you can create uh, or driving profitable growth by building sustainable supply chains what ingredients you have to have according to my opinion at least and um, if you would like to continue this conversation, how to build winning strategies for successful implementation, please reach out. I wish you a good day and thank you very much for listening. Thank you.